I remember flying down to uh, <laughs> Brazil, went through Sao Paulo, and on uh, October 1st, 2013, I arrived in Fortaleza, Brazil, which place uh, the place I would call my home for you know almost the next two years. So it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, so I remember I uh, September the last day of September, I got on a flight from New York. I flew to Atlanta. And I actually was able to see a lot of guys from my district that had also just served one transfer in the United States. And we all met at the Atlanta airport. I remember I was walking, I was by myself, which was a little bit weird. Um, because a missionary, you're usually not by yourself. I might have been with another missionary from a mission. I don't remember too well, but I remember um, there was three guys from my district. But I didn't see them and they yelled, Helvy, you know, which is my last name. I look around, I was like... You know, like my bros from the NTC, and we all had gotten our visas, and it was fun. We all traveled to Sao Paulo together, from Atlanta to Sao Paulo, and uh, and then I remember in Sao Paulo we were all met by um, uh, someone that the church hires to help uh, missionaries get to Sao Paulo and then get to their other flights, and uh, but he didn't speak English, and none of us spoke Portuguese, so it was a little hard, but it worked out. He was kind of pointing around, and he knew what he was doing. I he. He had this just little white sign that he'd written LDS Church or LDS Missionaries, and I was like, I hope this guy's legit because he's taking our bags. And but yeah, it ended up being legit. And then I met up with some other people there. There was, uh, I think, I want to say maybe eight or nine of us on the flight from Sao Paulo to Fortaleza, uh, and it was just awesome. I remember just the anticipation of it. You don't know what to expect. Uh, the Sao Paulo was a, a lot different from any international airport that I had seen or been a part of. Um, and then we got to Fortaleza. I remember flying into Fortaleza. I was actually picturing kind of an uh, really undeveloped and kind of uh, poor uh, land, right? And where, where it kind of you you picture. That's what I pictured. I don't know. You know, I had looked it up on face or on Google, but there's you know you know know what you're gonna expect. But we flew in and all of a sudden there's just these massive amounts of high-rise buildings. I was like, what is this? Like, I was expecting these little shacks out in, you know, the jungle, really. But it's a huge international city, really, and uh, really tall buildings. And the buildings are made out of brick, which is really different from our buildings. Especially I'm from San Francisco. If any buildings were made out of brick, they'd just be destroyed in any earthquake that would come. But um, any just, just tall buildings, and we're flying in, and it's just massive. You know, it's just... Just, I couldn't believe how big it was. Um, and we fly into the airport. I remember we all stayed together as a group. We went to the baggage claim and we got our bags before we come out of security. So we're hoping someone's there because we don't know what's going on. And we all stayed together until everyone got their bags. And I remember walking out and uh, there we saw the president's wife uh, and two missionaries. And, you know, immediately we just I fell in love with them. And, you know, it was just like, oh, you know, someone to take care of me. I ended up. Uh, being trained by also an American from Texas. I remember the first day we went to the mission home and we had lunch together with the other people that had just gotten there, they're the missionaries and um, the, the missionaries that served in the mission office. And, uh, and I remember, you know, just kind of the experiences and meeting mission president who I ended up loving, you know, and just immediately when he walked her in the room, you could just feel of his love, you know, and it's uh, President Sister Souza, uh, who are no longer mission presidents there. I absolutely loved the first day experience, although I was kind of taken back, but it was kind of nice because he felt like you were part of something, you know, and then I remember I met my companion and we went to our area, which is a uh, an area kind of far out, still in the city of Fortaleza. Most of our mission is in the city of Fortaleza. Uh, but it was uh, a lot different from what I had seen in the airport, or from, from the airplane, and a lot different from where the mission office was. Uh, this is actually what I kind of expected. Uh, it was, uh, you know, no high-rise buildings whatsoever and brick homes. And, but uh, it was an awesome experience. I loved my first area, uh, and I loved my trainer. Uh, but it was hard, really hard, uh, especially because I didn't speak the language. Like I had said earlier, I, I kind of wished I had the opportunity to go back to New York. I even asked my companion, what do you think President would say if I asked him if I could go back to New York? <laughs> and uh, But I remember uh, something that President had told me in my first interview. He said, it's going to be a little bit difficult, and 
I remember he, he used Google Google uh, Translate sometimes because I wasn't understanding him and he wasn't understanding me. He speaks a little bit of English, a lot of English now. He's a lot better at it. But uh, so it was kind of this funny thing. And But I remember he told me and Sister Sozo told me, she always says, you know, like, it's going to be hard, but just wait three months. If you still want to go back to the United States in three months, we'll let you go back. But I promise you, you won't. And so the first transfer was super hard. But, uh, you know, once you kind of... Kind of just accept that, okay, this is a difficult experience, and uh, especially when you rely on the Lord, sometimes you feel, even, even though you have your companion, you have your, you know, your leaders of the mission, you can't, I felt alone. A lot of times, you're far away from your, fa your family and your friends, um, and I just felt completely alone, and that's when you have to rely on the Lord. You know, I had, in those six weeks, I had some of the most experience, spiritual experiences and personal experiences with the Lord than I've ever had. You know, so sometimes when we have those struggles, I think those that struggle, my first transfer, was necessary not only for my mission, but for my life, knowing that like when we're alone and when we feel alone, really He's by our side and and so really turn to the Lord in, in those in those times and, and you'll feel of His love and like it always says the Spirit will kind of just uh, let you know that everything's gonna be okay.